Duelist Cup is on, people, and I've been dominating the competition with this brand new deck, a deck I've been wanting to play forever, the Paradox Brothers deck, Gate Guardian. And if you've been living under a rock, you probably don't know that Gate Guardian has a ton of brand new support that came out in, I don't remember the name of the set, but it came out. But let me go over the deck a little bit before we go into the replays. First, we're going to be using Magician Soul. Magician Soul is a good way so you could be able to draw some cards. A lot of the new Gate Guardian cards turn the Gate Guardian pieces like Kazi, Jin, Sangha, and Suijin into continuous spell cards that you can easily get rid of with Magician Soul if you can't go into any of your fusions at that time. And you will be able to draw up to two cards getting rid of any of your spell cards you don't need. It also has the ability to send Kazijin, which is a spellcaster, to the graveyard just to be able to special summon it. That way you can get to your fusion a little bit easier. Of course, we got two Ash Blossoms, just a little bit easy. Elemental Hero Prisma, just so I can copy the name of any one of the Gate Guardian pieces. We have Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth. It is basically our searcher for the field spell, since we're not running any terraforming. And it also has the ability to destroy any monster that battles one of your monsters, as long as you have a Labyrinth World card on your field. Self-explanatory here, we have our Gate Guardian pieces. We're going to be running two of each. You could technically run one of each because you can use them from the ban. You can get them back from the banish zone. But Kashtira likes to banish things face down, and you don't want to, you know, be in a situation where the ogre banishes any of your pieces face down from your deck, and then that's it. So I have two just in case. Of course, I love putting Kashtira, so we're just going to be putting in two Fenrir, one Unicorn, just for the heck of it. It's pretty nice and it baits out a lot of cards, so a lot of times I like to go to Fenrir, bait out an Ash, and then go into the Shadow Ghoul of, Lab of the Labyrinth, because that's really what I want to search out anyway. Of course, we have Labyrinth... Labyrinth Heavy Tank. I was going to say Labyrinth Tank of the Heavy. That doesn't make sense. Labyrinth Heavy Tank. Basically, you can normal summon without tribute, but it can't attack during the turn it is summoned. And it will be able to take one of your Gate Guardian pieces that is either in your hand, deck, or face up your banner zone as a continuous spell card. And you'll also be able to destroy an opponent's monster, so not bad. We have Illusion of Chaos. Illusion of Chaos is able to search out Magician Soul. And if you don't want to get rid of Kazi Jin, Magician Soul could be sent to the graveyard for the cost of Magician Soul being special summoned to the field. Feather Duster, always just nice to have. Preparation of Rights can get... Illusion of Chaos to hand, and you might be thinking, just so you can get Illusion of Chaos to hand, if it serves as a dead card, it's easily getting rid of by Magician Soul, which will let you draw a card. Sacred Soul of the Seven Stars is a great card because tons of level sevens, and again, the Gate Guardian pieces can be retrieved from the Banished Zone, so you can banish them and then get them back anyway. You also can get back your Banished Kashtira cards thanks to the Kashtira Birth Continuous Spell card. So what I like to do a lot of times is just summon up Unicorn, use the Continuous Spell card, then use the Sacred Sword of the Seven Stars to banish it, draw two cards, and then I can use the spell card to bring it right back to the field. We have Lightning Storm, just in case things get rough. Fusion Deployment can bring any one of the Gate Guardian pieces straight to the field. Ryoku, Ryoku Guardian is basically an instant win condition. As long as your life points are lower than your opponent's, you can have your opponent's life points and add it to one of your Gate Guardian monsters, and that's pretty much going to cinch you the game. We have Labyrinth Wall Shadow. Monsters can't attack the turn they are summoned, except monsters whose original level is level 5 or higher, so pretty much all your monsters will be able to attack. Once per turn, you can take one of the Gate Guardian pieces from your hand, deck, or banish zone and put it as a face-up continuous spell card. This is also not a hard one per turn, so you can actually play multiple of these cards and be able to get them to the field. And at the start of your opponent's battle phase, you can destroy one of their monsters with 1600 or less attack. That's ridiculous. Of course, we were even over Cash Tierra Birth, just so you could be able to get your Cash Tierra monsters back. And if your opponent is playing a card that relies on the graveyard a lot, you could probably banish a lot of their good stuff. Called by the Grave, I only had one. I probably had two if I could. Double attack, wind and thunder, just a quick play spell card that can destroy any card as long as I have a gate guardian card on the field. And you can also banish it to get one of your gate guardian pieces that's either banished or in your deck to your hand, so not bad. We have Prey of Jirai Gumo, it becomes a monster while on the field, and it can also destroy a monster in the same monster zone as it as well. And you can also banish it and get back a gate guardian piece just like double attack wind and thunder. The extra deck is not too stellar, just some cash tier stuff. We got Underworld Goddess just because we can. Big Eye. We have the 
ability to make Baron, and we have the big guy, Gate Guardian. Of course, it takes all of the Gate Guardian pieces to summon it, but it's really easy. You can banish from your hand, field, or graveyard up to three times per turn. It can negate any effect that would target a card you control and destroy, and if it's destroyed, it can special summon a level 11 or lower Gate Guardian monster from your deck or your extra deck. And of course, that means easy way to go to the smaller pieces. Even after this gets destroyed, it floats into something pretty good. You have Gate Guardian of Water and Thunder up to twice per turn. It can reduce a monster's attack to zero and get one of its fusion components back to the field from the banner zone. Not bad. Same thing with Gate Guardian of Wind and Water. If it's destroyed, it'll get back one of the pieces, but this effect is up to twice per turn. If your opponent activates a spell or a trap card, it will negate it. Won't destroy it, but it will negate it. This is pretty much your first turn Gate Guardian piece. I like to start off with this card just so I can block up two of my opponent's spell cards if I really need to. Then you have Gate Guardian of Thunder and Wind, and you can get yourself one of your Gate Guardian Spell or Trap cards from your deck to your hand. And if it's destroyed, of course, you can get back one of your pieces, just like all the other fusion cards. And that's pretty much it, so let's go into the replays. All right, as you can see, this duel is taking place during the Duelist Cup. So pretty stiff competition out here, but of course I'm going to start with Fenrir and they're going to go into Maxi. Maxi is not going to really matter much to me because I'm not going to be special summoning a lot anyway. Going to go into the Unicorn. Labyrinth Tank is a normal summon so they get nothing from the Maxi. I'm going to use the effect of the Field Spell so I can actually get Kazijin and then I'm going to let them draw but it's going to be worthwhile because I'm going to be able to get out my Fusion Monster, the Gate Guardian of Wind and Water which could block any of their Spell Attractors so twice per turn. But they counter me with Lava Golem but it's still not too bad. Suijin can come to the field because they got rid of it. Of course, then they're going to go to some Kaiju shenanigans here. And look at that. Boom! Straight to the field. Did not even expect the Orochi to come into play here. And they're going to leave me with the Lava Gun. The Lava Gun can get rid of any of their cards if they want to. Remember, Orochi could keep coming back to the field, so it's not going to really matter too much. Of course, with thanks to Lava Gun, I'm going to be taking that 1,000. And it might look like I'm in a pretty bad predicament, but I'm not out of it yet. Here we go. Just normal summon into Unicorn. I'm pretty sure most people have never seen that. Then I'm going to get the Cashier of Spell card to be able to get back my Fenrir to the field. Fenrir will be able to search if I really want to, but I guess I don't go for it now. First I go for the Sangha. Okay, yeah, then I go for the search. Then I get rid of all my Gate Guardian pieces so I can summon up the big boy Gate Guardian itself. I got rid of is that Draglong, so that way he can go into number 100 and pretty much OTK me. They're going to go for the Orochi, but I'm going to use Cobite Grave so I can get rid of the Orochi and that way I'll be able to attack them directly freely. Now you might be asking why didn't I attack first with the Fenrir and just banish the Orochis because I knew I already had that right here. I, I had the call, so it didn't really matter. Now we're going for the Gate Guardian attack and it's pretty scary because we know they have Kaijus and Lava Golem, so I'm not expecting my monsters to stay, to the, stay on the field much longer and there we go, but Gate Guardian activates. And I get the Wind and Water, so I can block the Spell and Trap cards. They try Raigeki, and I say no way to that. And gone. So they're pretty much in a pretty bad predicament here. I'm going to use the Spell card so I can banish things from their graveyard, and it doesn't matter because they tap out. There's no way they can actually win, because even if they tried attacking into my Gate Guardian piece, which they could beat over, I did have the Quick Play Spell card, and it was just going to destroy it anyway, so it was game over. Next duel in the Duelist Cup. And I believe I'm going second. So yeah, this deck could fight going second. And oh goodness, I almost forgot about this. Yeah, this is going to be at Ignister. So you know how this goes. They're going to be able to make plays all day. Going into their bread and butter place like the Dark Infant. Being able to get their field spell. And I'm just sitting here without a Lava Golem in hand. Because I do run Lava Golem in the deck. And I'm just wondering, what am I going to do? Actually, no, I don't run Lava Golem. What am I talking about? I, I run Lava Golem so many decks. But yeah, I was wondering what am I going to do because I had a feeling this was just going to end with them going into the big unaffected by anything card. And I just got to say, I'm glad I wasn't going second because they probably could have OTK me if they were going second. Look at this. They're just going to keep popping off. And I'm just, and right now, when I'm looking at my hand, and I'm like, I don't really have a Gate Guardian played right now that can actually do anything at the moment. 
So I'm pretty much betting on my sixth card to be able to uh, get me out of this jam. And you see, update jammers there. It would have allowed one of his monsters to be able to attack twice if he uses it as link material. And that's why I'm glad I was going second. And there we go. So now they got a back row, and I don't really have an out to that card specifically. There they go with the max C. So now they're pretty much putting me in a corner where even if I could special summon, do I even want to? I summoned my tank so I could get off my search, but it doesn't matter. Luckily, I got sword. Sword so I could draw two cards. Then they have the ash. And right now, I'm just looking at my board state like, what the heck am I going to do right now? I decide to take a chance going to Magician because then Kazi Jin. And now all I need is Sangha to be sent to the graveyard. And I will be able to go into the Gate Guardian, which I'm able to do because I did send that spell card to the graveyard. I'm going to go into searching again for my field spell, throw down the field spell. Now I got all the gate guarding pieces I need and I can officially beat over this pretty much unstoppable monster. It uses that card but it doesn't matter because his card it can't be, the, it usually it destroys his own card but it can't be destroyed anyway. I have no idea why he did it. I just decided to just throw a gate guardian piece on there just like I say for later. I'm going to throw Kazijin and Hofi Suijin next turn that way I can get the water gate guardian. I mean, the Gate Guardian of Wind and Water, so I could block spell cards. He brings back the Ignis, the card, and I'm like, it doesn't really matter. He's going to destroy my card. He targeted it. Well, guess what? I have Gate Guardian to stop that. So they use the Ignis's effect, and I was trying to use Gate Guardian's effect, but Gate Guardian's effect didn't work because it's still unaffected. I just thought it was when it's Link Summon. It's unaffected, period. But they're trying to go in for their tactics so they can take control of my monster. Not going to work. I'm just going to block that spell card. And I still got one more negate on my side. They actually tribute into Nibiru. But they completely forget about the Shadow Cool that's in my graveyard. So I just pop it and that's game over. They know they're done. Next duel and I'm still going second. This deck will prefer to go first. And of course I see something terrible. You all know how Punk goes. I'm going to try to stop it with Ash Blossom. But Ash Blossom is not enough to stop Punk. And there they go. They continue on their bread and butter combos. They're just going to make everything go through. And my hand is looking really, really good. I'm just wondering what they're going to play and how am I going to be able to get around them. Now, the, looking at their final board state, the Ash really does, really did kind of help. I have a feeling they were going to try to go into a lot more. There they go. They have that field spell, that field spell, which is a not a hard once per turn. So they're going to be able to keep drawing cards. I absolutely hate that field spell. And of course I hate that card as well because that card right there can just keep coming right back. And they're going to keep going just resolve all their effects. I'm telling you, I, and the thing is, this is making everything go faster, these replays. Sitting there and having to go all this, all, go through all this is insane. I, goodness, I, I, I thought I was going to go crazy. I should have just did my laundry while this whole entire turn was happening. But I was trying to calculate in my hand how I can win. And yeah, I think the Ash did do something to them because it looks like they could have probably did a little bit more. The first thing we want to do is Feather Duster. We don't want to deal whatever's in the back row. We know they searched out a card, so let's just get rid of it. Then we're going to Fenrir and we're going to try to bait out Ash. But instead we got Maxi instead. Of course, since they use Maxi, I'm going to banish their Punk Monster, but they're going to just use it as a Synchro Summon. I really wanted to banish it because I know it could keep coming back to the field. And of course, they're going to go to the Big Dragon. The Dragon is going to be able to actually return Fenrir to the hand, which literally doesn't matter at all. Of course, I'm going to go use my Shadow Ghoul to get the Field Spell. And like I said before, the Field Spell is not a hard once per turn when it can search for Gate Guardian pieces. So feel free to keep playing multiple in a turn. There we go. We actually baited out the Ash, which was great because I had the fusion deployment in my hand and I really, really wanted them to use Ash if they had it. So that way my fusion deployment doesn't get hit. There we go. Kazijin is there. We're going into our Gate Guardian of Wind over here. And I did have the fusion, like I said, I did have fusion deployment, but I did decide to not go for it because I didn't want to give them any more cards with Max C. And I think my board is pretty strong. I can block two spell or trap cards. It's going to most likely just be spell cards. They have no set cards. And I have Fenrir to stop any of their monster plays. They go do their search. And of course, I'm going to go and just banish their unicorn. They just bring out a brand new one. They go for their spell card. And I'm just going to block that spell card. 
So no more searching out another one for them. And now they're at a crossroads. Which one are they gonna hit? They made the right choice by getting rid of that instead of my big gate guardian. They decided to go for Fenrir. It was the probably the worst of the two evils there. And they pretty much don't really have much they can do against me at this point. I'm going to get myself another Gate Guardian piece, but I'm not even going to be really special summoning anyway, so it doesn't matter to me if they use Max C. They know they're pretty much in a really, really bad spot. I'm going to just use my combination, destroy their monster, and I'm going to be able to use the effect of my Click Play Spell card. They're going to go for the Ash, and now they're left with only one card in hand. Well, I got my big Fusion Monster that could block two Spell or Trap card activations and can float into anything else. Of course, I'm going to go to Fusion Deployment so I can get another Fusion Monster and win the game, but that was it. They knew the end was coming for them. Final duel showing up, Gate Guardian. And again, I am going second. Again, if this deck goes first, it could pop off a lot. They're going to go into some Dark World shenanigans here with Danger. And my hand is looking pretty promising at the moment. I can go into Gate Guardian turn one if I really want to. Because I do have the Shadow Ghoul, which can give me the Field Spell. So, which means I have two Field Spell activations, which will give me Suijin and Sangha. And I already have Kazijin in my hand. It looks like they probably didn't go into the most... They probably have the most optimal play here. So, they're just going to go straight into something that they're going to feel safe with. And that's going to be the BLS Link Monster right there. And, yeah, normally that would be a problem. Unless you could beat over it, and lucky for me, I can't beat over it. And then I draw it into Harpy's Feather Duster. Let's just get rid of their back row. That way they can't do any crazy shenanigans to me. They were trying to bait me, I guess, with a Pot of Avarice. And here we go. We're going to get rid of the Shadow Ghoul and get two of the field spells. We're going to activate one to get a Gate Guardian piece straight to the field. It's going to be Suijin. Get rid of it. Do it once more. We're going to bring Sangha straight to the field as a continuous spell card. Get rid of all three pieces. And just like that, Gate Guardian comes up. No fuss at all. Get rid of that Black Blacklist Soldier. That would normally be a problem. And we're going to set two disruptions on the field so we can destroy some of their cards. And right now, they only got one card in hand. They are top decking. And they top deck into something pretty decent. They're going to discard it. And both players are going to draw and discard. And they're probably hoping to discard a good Dark World card. But it's not going to matter. Because even if they got Graffa, they can't really destroy my Gate Guardian anyway. So that's the deck, my friends. If you want to try out Gate Guardian, you can try out my list. There's plenty of other lists. Right now, I really like this list. Because I love just throwing Cash Tira into things. And they're level 7, which means I can use the Sacred Sword on them. I can also get them back as well. Another thing to um, note is that this card allows you to normal summon level 7 monsters without tribute. Not just catch Tira monsters, which means any of the Gate Guardian pieces you could just normal summon if you, as long as you have this spell card out as well. I forgot to go over that. I actually had a duel where I was able to do that. I just didn't get to record it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about my build. It's pretty much been carrying me through this entire event, and I'm pretty much done. I pretty much have all the prizes already. So I'm going to be clearing it out pretty soon. The only change I probably would make is adding another Gate Guardians combined, because if you're going against Cash Tira, you know. Corn will be able to just snipe it right out of the extra deck and then you won't have access to it. Unfortunately, I was only able to pull one at the moment. Hopefully, I'll be able to pull more soon or I'll be able to craft into one. Wherever I see, I got 60 UR credit token, whatever things up there. So I could just craft another one if I really want to. I might just do that. Yeah, and my extra deck is only 13 cards, so I gotta add two more cards anyways. Of course, I'll add one more of that and maybe just something else. I'm not too sure. But again, let me know what you guys think. I think the deck works out pretty well. I was really hoping I could use Ryoku Guardian because I've never been able to win a game with it but you can win the game with it pretty easily but overall the deck is pretty basic you just search out your gate guardian pieces try to start off with gate guardian of wind and water especially if you're the first turn player you're already stopping two of their spell or trap cards this is pretty much a good card to go into after gate guardian is destroyed that way if your opponent wants to crash into more monsters you can just reduce that monster's attack to zero this is one you want to play during your turn that way you can search any of the spell or trap cards but in most cases you're going to be going to the gate guardian of wind and water or you're going to be fully committing into gate guardians combined and letting gate guardians combined summon out any of the other two but again people that's the deck let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe and i want to see you in the comments section as well that's all for me people peace out